I want you to find Joshua chapter 3, and I want you to, to park there. Thank you, Ursus. Thank you. I want you to park there, and we'll get you in uh, about five minutes this morning. We're going to be, be about 15, 20 minutes, Miss Sharp. About 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, so find Joshua chapter 3 and just sit there. All right, put, put a, a, a something in their pen or something. And then at the same time, I want you to find Exodus chapter 3. All right, and then look, let's look at a, at a couple of verses. Brother Harold, I didn't bring my clicker, so just, just click for me, if you will. Just click for me when I when I said this. You got one up there? All right. Somebody yeah. Uh, we're talking about godly resources, which is a stock or supply of material assets that can be drawn on by a person in order to function effectively. Somebody say resources. We thank God for his his divine resources. Amen. Now listen, uh, God he cannot he cannot operate in dimensions. He cannot, he cannot operate in dimensions because he's too big. He's, he's, he's too grand. He's too awesome to be compartmentalized. God just is. God just exists. Amen. You, you cannot, you cannot uh, compartmentalize God. You cannot uh, put him into, into a box or into a dimension. He, he will break the box. He will destroy, destroy the box. Now, when, when Jesus, when God, rather, if, you, if you're in Exodus chapter 3, he has a conversation with Moses. And um, in this conversation... Moses asked him uh, just a real simple question. Exodus 3 and 11, and Moses said un, unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Verse 13, here's Moses' simple question to God. He says, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of our fathers have sent me unto you, they're going to ask me, What is your name? What should, I, what should I say unto them when they ask me, simple question, what is your name? And, and God says, Here, here's my name. Then. He says what? Now, now Moses, no, no, Moses, and if you read the rest, rest, rest of that, he, he, yeah, Lord, but What's your name? Some, somebody asks you your name. That's a fairly simple question. Many of you would shout out your name. With God, this, this question is a bit more complex because God does not operate in dimensions. And, in, and if God had given Moses a name, then God would have put himself in a box or in a dimension. Well, how, how you say it, Rev? Because all of our names came from somewhere, somebody. Isn't, isn't that right? If, if you have a name, it is because somebody was before you and named you. 
And, and if, if they in fact named you, then it suggests you have an origin. So when Moses says to God, very simple question, what is your name? God says, Moses, that's, that's a bit complicated for me. How's, how's that complicated for you, God? Because I was here first. There, there, there is no origin to my arrival. When, when you get here, I already was here. <laughs> so I cannot give you a name, Moses, other than to say my name is. <laughs> Help me preaching here. That's my name, Moses. Lord, but, but if, I, if I say that, they're going to still just tell them I am that I am sent you because God cannot operate in dimensions he just exists he, he says I am the alpha which means what I was here at the beginning to, to say start and I'm at the end To say finish. That'd be quite impressive is when we were kids, you were racing, and somebody said, Oh, you march, cassette go, and while you ran, they ran ahead of you, got to the finish line. That'd, that'd blow you away. So God says, I am that I am. So God, this this notion, this very simple question of what is your name, um, is is complex for God because God cannot be put in dimensions. So God really doesn't give a name. He gives a description because I think it's up to us to fill in the blank. <laughs> yes. So as time goes on, as the dispensation goes forward, um, we name God. But God doesn't name himself. Now, we name God because he's too complex for our minds to comprehend who he is. And so we name God so that we might be able to put him in dimensions. Is that all right in here? And, and so it is in Exodus chapter 15, we call him Jehovah Rapha. Which means what? In Exodus chapter 17, we call him Jehovah Nisi, which means what? Touch your name and say, we are naming him. Because it helps us compartmentalize the complexity of who he is. Is that all right? In Judges chapter 6, we call him Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom, which means what? Whatever peace you have, it's coming from I am that I am. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, we call him Jehovah Siskanu, which means what? Whatever righteousness you have, it's coming from I am that I am. In Psalms 23, we call him Jehovah Rohi, which means what? I shall not want. Is that all right in here? We, we, we put him uh, in, in, in dimensions. Uh, and in uh, Genesis 22, that should be Genesis 22, Moses called him Jehovah Jireh, which means what? Touch your name and say, thank God for his provisions. That's the fourth resource I want to talk about today. Ten minutes, a resource called provisions. We've already looked at a resource called peace. We also looked at a resource called power. Last week we looked at a resource called prayer. Where would you be without any of these things on that screen? Where would your life be if God didn't give you peace that surpassed all understanding? Where would you be if God did not give you power to rise above what you're going through? 
What would you be if God didn't leave us prayer so we can talk to him? And for God's sake, where would you be if God didn't leave us some divine provisions? Have you ever considered the invisible stuff that shows up in your life to make the visible worth living. You ever, you ever continue, now, when we wake up in the morning, it, it, it might not, Sister Pam, register. We, we got a lot on our mind. The kids got to get off to school, got to brush our teeth, got to see what's going on, what happened last night. It may not register in your mind when you put one foot on the floor. That it meant God has clothed you in your right mind for you to know to put one foot on the floor. It may not register to you that when you wake up in the morning, it meant God has watched over you all night long and told your heart to slow down so you can sleep. But speed back up so you can wake up. It may not register to you. The invisible stuff God does to make the visible worth living. You can't see peace, but you know it's there. <laughs> Am I talking to 48 of y'all in here? Lose your peace. You, you, can't, you can't see prayer, but you know when it's there. You can't see power. High five your neighbor and say, but you sure know what's there. You, and you can't necessarily see provisions, but you know that they're there. When Moses, when Moses called God Jehovah Jireh, he, he calls him that because the Lord has supplied a need. Uh, 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 and Abraham. Abraham is, is about to sacrifice his son, and the Bible says there is a ram in, 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 in the thickets, in the bush. And this ram is something God supplied just at the moment that Abraham needed it. So, so then there, there then, Sister Jay, is a bit of revelation about provisions. Provisions do not give us what we want. But they show give us what we need. Now, I wonder if I got at least 58 of y'all in here who can wave your hand and say, I may not have gotten everything I wanted this year. But God has showed supplies. Come on, help me preach in here. Touch your name and say, he supplied my needs. I, I, I ain't get everything I wanted, but I've got to be honest with you. He supplied my needs. Everything I needed, he's come through for me time and time again. He's made a way out of no way. I didn't get everything I wanted, but he supplied my needs. Come on, talk to me here. I may have been broke, but I didn't go hungry. I, I might have been sick, but I'm still living. I might have gone down. But I ain't going out. Touch a neighbor and say, he supplied all my needs, all my needs. I ain't, I ain't got everything I wanted. But he supplied all my needs. What would you be, Sister Jaleith, if God didn't supply you with a, with a fresh bag of provisions every morning? What, make, what, makes, what makes life worth living, particularly as you, as you get a little older, you get a little older, what makes worth life living is knowing you, you got a reasonable portion of health. You don't, you, don't think, you don't think about that, but when you get a little older, you start, you thank God for the days you don't have a pain. Come on, you thank God for the days you ain't dizzy. Come on, who am I talking to in here? If you, could, if you could just cook dinner without feeling that, that arthritis come up in that elbow. C come on, thank you, Jesus, for that. If, if you could just go to the mall and get a couple of things without that knee acting up, that's enough to give God praise. He ain't got to give me no car. Just let me not have no pain. 
Come on, high five your neighbor and say provisions. Provisions. Where would you be if God didn't give you invisible stuff called provisions? I'm done, Deacon Spears. I see the look on your face. I'm done. In Joshua chapter 3, watch this. <laughs> Joshua chapter 3. I'm done. We got to the text. Bump, bump. Only blowing one time. Joshua chapter 3, verse 7. God has made a critical decision. Mm. Joshua chapter 3. God has decided. Listen, as powerful as he is... He's decided to take it up a notch. That's fascinating. We cannot comprehend, Sister Venus, the idea of a God who's already all-powerful. Declaring in Scripture, I'm going to take it up a notch. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 7, the word of the Lord said, And the Lord said, Unto Joshua, this day will I begin to what? Where? Why? <laughs> the Lord makes a critical decision, Brother Howard. He does is right there. He says, Joshua, today. I'm going to take it up a notch. Joshua, today, your yes is coming through. <laughs> Joshua, today, I'm about to do something in your life. And I'm going to do it in front of everybody. Each Reverend John, but touch your neighbor and say, can you handle becoming larger? I just, I just lost half my room right there. I'm, I'm with you, Sister Vine. Yes, Lord. Bring it on. Bring it on. He says, Joshua, today I'm going to magnify you. Magnify means to do what? The Lord says, Joshua, I am going to, today I'm going to increase, expand, enlarge you in front of all the people. Joshua, I'm going to take it up a notch. Watch this in your life. And Joshua, I'm going to do it in front of everybody. I just lost half the room right there. I just lost half the room. Because some of you, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be here. I ain't talking to you today then. You get happy to be here. You, you, be, you be cool for a couple of minutes. But for the rest of us who say, God, any way you bless me this morning. And I don't care if you live in pretty good. God says, today, I'm going to take it up a notch. Touch your neighbor and say, can you handle becoming bigger? Have you ever had a moment in your life where you wanted to take it up a notch? You ever had a moment in life where you did take it up a notch? Think that, think that through a second. Just want to make sure we're ready for where God is about, about to take us. Just, wanna, just think that through a second on a primitive level. Just think that through. Think that through a second. Uh, ladies, have you ever had a day where you did your hair, you did your makeup, and everything is everything? You looked in the mirror, and just before you left out the door, you said, I, I'm pretty good today. <laughs> ladies, don't leave me hanging. Yeah, I know. I said, well, not me. Whatever the Lord does is going to be good. Let me get on out of here. You did it without doing your hair and all <laughs> You ever, you ever, ladies, you ever, you ever cooked a meal 
or, or cook something and, and taste it and, and say it to yourself very quietly. I put my foot in that. I, I know. I, come on. I, I did my thing on that right there. Now, I ain't talking to you. However it comes out, Lord, just let it be good to their, to their mouth. I ain't talking to you right now. Fellas, you ever, you ever washed and waxed your car? Got the rims all shined up, and as you drive, and I, Brother Al, come on, every car you got got 15-inch, 25-inch, 30-inch rims on it. <laughs> Look at your car and say, they spinning, they spinning. <laughs> <laughs> you ever... All, all my ball players, or even maybe maybe bowling, whatever. You ever had a game that was so good when it was over? You, yeah, I did my thing in this game. I did. You drop five or six points, or maybe you bowl and you got four or five strikes in a row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about. Touch your neighbor and say, "Can you handle becoming larger?" We've already done it on some primitive level when we were we were young. We don't, we don't do it no more now, but when we were younger, all of us were younger, um, our, our parents would, would, would host dinner, you know, and they'd invite family. It might have been Thanksgiving dinner, whatever the case may be. But when they would host dinner, they would always host dinner, but they would take it up a notch. You know what, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you've been at that house all year, but, but on this particular day, you see a tablecloth. Come on a dining room table. Now you, you've been looking at that table the whole year. But on this particular day, tablecloth. Make, make that whole dining room look, look all different. Come on, talk to me here. You, you, on, on this day, you, you were allowed to get the dishes from the top shelf. Come on. And if you were rich, like the Smiths, you probably had a china cabinet. But for the rest of us, they were above the cereal. Uh-huh. You, you got dishes that match for the first time all year. You saw a table where the dishes, you didn't even know y'all had those dishes. That dining room looked totally different. The, the silverware was laid. You, you didn't even know y'all had that much silverware. A fork for the salad. We weren't even eating salad. Fork for the salad. Fork for the dessert. Fork for the main course. Fork for the macaroni and cheese. <laughs> My trusty love. Fork for the vegetables. Two knives. 15 spoons, big cup, small cup, a centerpiece in the middle of the table. Mom and daddy and them took it up a notch. You put, <laughs> you put the leaf in that table. Am I talking to anybody in here? That table is the size of this pulpit once they got all done with it. Before that day, only you and your brother sit and say, you're too close to me. You close. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, can you handle becoming larger? We, we vacuumed a little, little longer. We dusted a little bit harder. I'm for the loose half of the audience. Some of us wash walls. Some... Touch your name and say, you don't know nothing about it. You don't, Sister Jones, you don't know nothing about no washing. You don't know nothing about that. Sister Elder, you with me. But Sister Jones, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing about it. You no vi, living in no vi. You don't know nothing about no washing. No. <laughs> Smiths don't know nothing about washing walls. Sanders don't know nothing about washing walls. Why are we washing walls, mama? Why are we washing walls, Daddy? Because we got to do what? Take it up a notch. Preach, Reverend Johnson. They knew 
Brother Rod, what was about to be provided had to be presented in another way. And so they took it up a notch. And here's what God in this text is about to do to Joshua. He says to Joshua, today I'm about to magnify or increase or expand or take it up a notch. And when God says this to Joshua, he does something for Joshua he doesn't always do for us. Look at the next verse. He, he, he says to Joshua, after, after he says, I'm taking up a notch, uh, and verse, verse 8, uh, and, thou, and thou shalt command the priests. He, he gives Joshua specifics. He says, and thou, here's what I want you to do. Here's how I'm going to take it up a notch. Josh. He says, and thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, when ye come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall what? <laughs> ye shall do what? Stand, stand still. There are times in your life you're going to have to learn how to shh and stand still. Some of us are too busy for God to take us up a notch. Touch your name and say, learn how to stand still. Watch this. I didn't come to talk about that. I came to tell you. So he says to Joshua, here's what I'm going to do for you. Here's how I'm going to magnify you. Here's how I'm going to increase you. When you come to the Jordan, so it takes the, take the Ark of the Covenant, and when the priests put their feet at the brink of the water, see if I got that on there, brink of the water, the water is going to open up. Now Joshua, this, this guy to this got to blow his mind. God gave Joshua specifics. He don't always give us specifics. God's just, we just, God says, I'm, uh, your yes is here, but he don't tell you where it's coming from. He don't tell you how it's going to get here. That's why I've learned to Sophie to just say, God, any way you do it. <laughs> Wherever it comes from. Watch this. Whomever it comes through. That's why you got to watch how you treat people, but that'd be That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be for Sunday stuff. We talked about that last reason. Deal with that last time. He says, Josh, put your, put, as soon as y'all put with the ark of coming, as soon as you put your feet to the brink of the water, the waters are going to line up on both sides. Now, when Joshua hears this, Joshua knows, Sarge, he knows that this is not a new miracle. He, he knows that God has already done this miracle before. He did it for Moses in Exodus chapter 14. But when he did it for Moses, Joshua wasn't there. So all Joshua could do is read about what he did for Moses. God says to Joshua, today, today, I'm going to take a miracle you read about and bring it into your reality. Touch your name and say, can you handle becoming larger? Because here's what God is about to do. God is about to take miracles we read about and bring them into 2015 into our reality. If that don't make you shout, what will? The fact that God says, what I've done for Moses and them, I'm about to drop that thing in your life. So however God provided for the children of Israel, God says, I'm about to provide for you the same way. So he fed them with manna from on high. He blessed, he made their enemy their footstool. However he blessed them, whatever you've read about, God says, I'm about to do that thing in your life. So then here, here, here's the revelation that they did. If I were you, I would go home and read about a miracle. 
Touch your name. Say, choose any one of them. Choose any one. Choose any one. Choose one. Read about a miracle because God said that everything you read about. That's the thing that's going to manifest itself in your life. So if I'm operating on not enough, I'm about to go home and read how he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. Because God says of everything you've read, that's the thing I'm about to manifest in your life. Touch your neighbor and say, can you handle becoming larger? Why, God? Why are you doing this for us? Because he says what? As I was. This is why, Sister Washington, God couldn't name himself. Because God had to make sure that whether we read the scripture 1930 or 2030, he's the same God yesterday. I'm losing half my audience right here. Today, touch your neighbor and say forevermore. Listen, here it is. God never goes out of style. That's why mom and them used to say, he's so high, you can't go over him. He's so low, you can't go under him. He's so wide. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, God is just God. All by himself. Can you handle becoming larger? Josh, so today, I'm going to magnify you in front of everybody. That they may know, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Next verse, God gives them a glimpse. He tells them what he's going to do, which is not a new miracle, but it has a new manifestation. <laughs> this is what Joshua does, and I'm done. Here's what Joshua does that blew the text away. After he tells Joshua, verse 8, here's what I'm going to do. Verse 9 says, and Joshua said, Unto the children of Israel. What? <laughs> well, well, what does Joshua do? <laughs> hey, hey, come here. What do what, what, what you want, Josh? I want you to hear the word of the Lord. When God is about to do something in your life, You've got to make sure you tell somebody where your provisions came from. Preach, Reverend Johnson. The, the, the problem we have is when God enlarges us, we shrink God. When God takes us to another level, we make him smaller in our lives. God, God's blessed some of us with nice, new, big, and beautiful houses. And you spend every other Sunday cleaning it versus coming to church and thanking God for it. God has blessed some of us with cars. When we were riding the bus, we came to church all the time. When we were on the church bus, we were here all the time. God has blessed us with cars, nice cars. And you find a new place to go every Wednesday. God has blessed some of us with money. You see how quiet he is right here? All right, quiet right there. And some of us will give the waiter more than you gave your church. Did I lose my audience right there? God has blessed some of us with clothes and clothes and clothes. And you still wake up on Sunday morning and say, I ain't got nothing to wear. Touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, can you handle becoming larger? You cannot shrink 
God as God makes you larger. If God is going to bless you, you need to tell somebody that God made a way out of no way. You need to tell somebody that the only reason I have this job is because God gave it to me. The only reason I'm driving this car is because God gave it to me. Just touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't going to rob God of his credit. But I'm going to say thank you, Jesus, for everything I have. Thank you, Jesus, for every resource I have. Thank you, Jesus, for every provision I have. Because when I look back over my life and I think things over, touch your neighbor and say, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Can we get out of here, y'all? Just touch your neighbor again and say, neighbor, can you handle becoming larger? Well, the reason the Lord blessed Joshua in front of everybody is because he said, Joshua, I'm going to make you larger. But Joshua, when you get to your next place, I need you to make me large yourself. God magnified you so you can magnify God. God increase your territory so you can increase your praise. God enlarge where you are so you can enlarge who he is. Just high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank God for everything he's done for me. I thank God for the house I have. It ain't a big house, but I still thank him for the house I have. I thank God for the car I drive. It ain't a new car, but it still gets me from point A to point B. Is there anybody this year that God has magnified? If I'm talking to you, just stand on your feet uh, and touch your neighbor uh, and say neighbor uh, he took it up a notch uh, and this time uh, on this Sunday uh, I'm going to take my praise uh, up a notch uh, I'm going to make sure um, uh, like the blind man last week uh, that I'm going to get loud um, uh, and let my neighbor know um, uh, that God uh, has been good to me uh, is there anybody in him uh, that can testify that God this year has been good to me just wave your hand and say thank you Jim for my kin making it for the job for the calm for the food I have the clothes on my back just thank Jesus for the husband you have for the wife you have I know you got a lot of complaints but if you still married, you ought to thank God for the husband you have and the wife you have. If your kids are still here, you ought to thank God that no bullet took them out this year. No car accident drove them away this year. You ought to thank God if your mama's still alive. I dare you to wave your hand and say thank you, G. If your father's still alive, you ought to wave your hand and say Say thank you, Jesus. Now look him in the face and say, Neighbor, if it had not been for the Lord, oh, yes, that was on my side. Oh, yes, 
I don't know where I've been. Somebody just begin to touch three people and say, God, been good to me. Ain't he all right? And he will make a way out of nowhere. This problem that I had, I just couldn't sing the song. I prayed and I prayed and they kept getting deep involved and I touch a neighbor and say neighbor I turn it over to Jesus I have any witnesses in here didn't he work it out I said ain't he alright Come on, high five three people and say he worked it out. On. Think about something he's done for you and begin to shout over it. Think about something he's done for you and begin to shout over it. Ah, yeah. Has it been good this year? Begin to shout over Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Touch your neighbor and say, when God makes you larger, magnify him too. Take your praise up a notch. Take your commitment up a notch. Take the very thing that God has done for you. Take it up a notch. Don't use success against God. Don't use success against God. God says, I want to magnify you. But you got to be able to handle becoming larger. And he told them, he says, here's how we're going to do it. When the Ark of the Covenant and the priests put their feet at the brink of the water, the water's going to step out. Now, he did that on purpose because they couldn't have done it without the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. Now God made them do that because he didn't want them to get to the next place and forget where they came from. My fear in here, some of you are beginning to forget where you came from. Wherever you are in life, sir, ma'am, whatever blessings you have is because of an almighty God. Watch this, who look beyond our faults. Raise your hands, we didn't deserve not one, not one. You didn't deserve one. Come on, say, I didn't deserve not one, not one of them. The job you have, you didn't deserve it. Somebody was probably more qualified than you. But God worked that thing out, and he did it so you would not forget where you came from. If God's going to make you larger, Here's the question. Will you magnify him the same way? Take it up a notch. Some of you are faithful. That's a good word for 2016. Take it up a notch. Some of you are faithful. Take it up a notch. Some of you are anointed. Take it up a notch. Some of you love the Lord. There's no question about it. Take it up a notch. 
I'm going to lose the half the audience I got left. Some of you are tithers. Take it up a notch. And watch God begin to magnify you. I'm done, Sister J. In front of everybody. What God's about to do in your life, he's going to do it in front of everybody. Somebody come on, give God praise for that. He's going to do it in front of God, in Jesus' name, we thank you to know that today you're going to magnify us. You're going to take it up a notch in our lives in front of everybody. Your provisions will do something in our lives that our eyes haven't seen and our ears haven't heard and our hearts haven't felt. God, as you enlarge us, help us to remember to enlarge you. Wherever we are, wherever we go, whoever we come in contact with, we're going to let them know that it is in you we move, live, and have our being. We're not going to come short of your glory, but we're going to give you praise and honor for the provisions you gave us in our lives. Already, God, three people testified this morning of how good you've been just to them this year. There are others here. And bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you for your resources, peace, power, prayer, and then today, provisions. Thank you in Jesus' name. Every glad heart said yes, so amen. Thank God. Come on, give God praise. If you will. Give God praise. Hug at least two or three people, two or three people, two or three people, and say, God's going to take you up a notch. God's going to take you up a notch.